Okay, there's a video that's going out saying that um, the KL is sitting uh, on a limestone, a sitting yeah. on limestone and that kind of thing. And um, what is your opinion on what has happened? Okay. Um, I mean, it's very hard for me to comment on what exactly ha has happened because I don't have the data and it will take time to actually find out what has happened. But being an engineer myself, the first thing that comes to my mind is, as you know, on big cities, there are a lot of pipes, underground pipes, underground sewers, underground tunnels going through, through the city itself. It's to take away, you know, all the human waste and all the kitchen waste and they all need to flow out through the city. So one possible reason could be is failure of these super tunnels. So when a tunnel fails, it could cause like a collapse of the roof. So over time, you can get these tunnels if they're not maintained and monitored properly these tunnels could could become um, you know could become weak and eventually the the roof can just fall off imagine the roof of your house if it's all you know a lot of um, decay of the wood and the timber the roof will just cave in and if somebody's standing on top of the roof the whole thing he will just fall through so that is one possible uh, thing that could have happened. And the other thing is it could be, you know, as you say, limestone. On a limestone formation, there could be a lot of cracks that form naturally. But over time, when you have this water, say rainwater, this rainwater, because we, we have a lot of pollutants in the atmosphere, it can become very acidic. So as the water percolates through the ground, and when it starts to move through the limestone formation, it can start to dissolve the limestone. So, you know, over years, it could start to dissolve and create big cavities in the limestone. So over time, when it starts to dissolve, you're going to get a weak limestone formation. And this water just continuously erodes the formation until you get a big form of cavity and you can get weakening of the whole limestone formation and cause immediate collapse. So that could be one possible option. So I'm looking at two, two possibilities. Is, is One is the failure of the sewage tunnel system. And number two could be potential uh, dissolving of the limestone. And and you said if the roof gets bad, then it will create problems and all that. So now my question is, yeah. what's happening on the ground itself? Is there a possibility apart from the two you are saying the possible reasons for the for the sinkhole? Can yeah. there be weight too much of weight in that area itself, which is causing that caving? Is it possible? But there could be a lot of other scenarios as well. As you know, there are a lot of tunnels in the area. They started all this MRT tunneling system that goes through around the area. And those vibrations caused by the trains can also cause a lot of movement in the ground. So I would say, you know, it's a combination of a lot of different different um, different effects that can cause failure of the tunnel or developing further cavities in the limestone. I would think, um, you know, um, that could be a possible option, but I'm saying it, everything needs to be well 
thought and well planned before doing a lot of development? Have we got all the surveys of what assets are going through the ground? You know, you can't you can't just do a new development and you know not think about what's already in the ground. So I would suggest is when there's a new development in future, the whole ground model is studied very um you know, very uh, aggressively or very intense so that we understand what is below our building. And once we understand what's below our building, then we plan what, what needs to go above the building. You know, most of the time I find is people don't think about what's below. Let's just go and build this 40-story skyscraper and you know we will we'll let let things sort out later on. No, it should should start in the forefront where we think about what's in the ground first before developing what's above. That a lack of foresight has also contributed to this um, ground coming caving in. I I would say that yes, you know it's all to do with planning and. Uh, managing what assets you have you know have we got um, are we monitoring all our tunnels i think uh, what uh, what the authorities should do is to set up a task force and start uh, mapping out all the underground all the underground services that run underneath of Kuala Lumpur and start to do a monitoring system where you try and monitor the ground movement and you detect any movements even the slightest millimeter so that it becomes an early trigger warning system so you know they have a series of control systems in place and and you have like a data center to collect all this data and the moment we say okay in this area the ground is moving like five millimeters in the last two weeks okay let's zoom in in the area let's start studying the area and if the movement continues to occur okay we will close the road or something like that so what I suggest is um, that they have a rigorous monitoring system, especially in areas where you have limestone or congested underground service tunnels. Sinkholes, yeah, it, it always happens in soils or ground that is easily dissolved by acid water. So, you know, what we do is mainly, you know, in early planning, if if you are if you're building in a sinkhole area, you have to start thinking of what foundation you're going to use. Is your development going to affect, you know, the surrounding areas or is your development going through a big, big uh, underground cavern? Because just just like how you see Batu Caves, you suddenly see a limestone, uh, Batu Caves is filled with limestone. So that similarly is what is in the ground as well. The limestone head can be top, bottom, top, bottom. So you really don't know what's in the ground until you investigate it. Depends on how big um, the cavity is. If it's a small cavity, yes. What, that's what we call grouting you grout the cavity out with concrete. You just fill it up. But imagine if you have a very big cavity, then you will not, uh, it will not be cost effective to fill it up. But what we can do is we can pile through the cavity. So we do a foundation and we make sure that the foundation passes through the cavity. So I've worked on the STAR LRT project which is uh, LRT2, 
which is from Bukit Jalil to Sentul Timo. And around Sentul area, we had we encountered a lot of limestone cavities and caverns. So what we did on that particular stretch, we we installed piles, and in areas where there's cavity, we install piles through the cavity and make sure they sit on sound and strong limestone. So in the long run, due to uh, rainwater flood and all that, you are saying the possibility of them dissolving is still there. So which means back to monitoring again. Is, is that how it works? All right. Yes, yes. So, I mean, it's unfortunate that you have limestone underneath KL, but the only way is to monitor the ground movement very stringently on every development, like, like a task force. I mean, uh, if you know Hong Kong, you've got a lot of steep slopes. You know, Hong Kong is built by a very, very steep slope, slow of development on hillsides and they have uh, a control office called geotechnical control office just to monitor ground movement and advise the government in areas where they think the movement becomes excessive. I think um, it's time that we start to think of a similar model like Hong Kong to set up a task force just to monitor ground movement in the area and also help with future developments. You can mitigate. Mm -hmm. You must have the right mitigation measure to develop around areas where you have sinkholes. So, you know, if, if you think a pipe is leaking, how do you detect the leaking pipe? Because if a pipe is leaking for a year, two years, three years, 60 years, now that water is going to dissolve your limestone beneath. So just imagine like a chalk. Yeah? You put a chalk underneath a tap. It drips, it drops, 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 and eventually the chalk will dissolve. That's exactly what happens in limestone. The water initially one trickle, two trickle, three trickle, and eventually it'll just cause a water flow. Again, you know, we have to be very careful um, in making sure none of our services leak, water leakages. Now, all this development that's occurring in Kuala Lumpur, the more you develop, there's going to be more surface water. So where is the surface water going? Is it just seeping into the ground? Or, you know, is it properly drained to go into the public sewers? So water strategy is also very important when we develop around uh, limestone areas. I mean, in the instance, Kuala Lumpur, you also have the Kenny Hill Formation, which is a weathered, weathered rock material. And those materials are more stable. You know, they're, they're a lot more stronger and, uh, you know, you don't have the issues. We can just pile on it and it will remain remain like that. I think um, what we need is uh, we need a good team in Kuala Lumpur, the irrigation engineers, the water engineers, the geotechnical engineers, uh, the tunneling engineers. They all need to come have a panel, sit and, you know, Everybody needs to do their work and and make sure that all the tunnels are working properly, you know, without any leakage into the ground. We, we need to prevent water from getting into the ground. I think uh, these incidences may have occurred long before but because social media was not strong before you know a lot of these incidents could have been covered up and dealt locally but now with social media being uh, 
so prevailing, you know, it, it does pick up all these incidents. And I think uh, it's a very good wake-up call, wake-up call for Kuala Lumpur to do something. I would suggest every building owner starts to do their own uh, own work to make sure that their buildings are stable and you know you can do investigations to see your foundation dig up dig up your designs and you know all building owners need to be aware of what what building what foundation is their building sitting on Am I on a limestone bedrock or am I on this Kenny Hill bedrock? If I'm on a limestone bedrock, then should I get an assessment of my building to make sure it's all safe and good? So a lot of records, you know, must be kept on buildings itself. You know, when I build a building, say in the 1990s, you know, when I've done my pilings, have I got those records with me? You have maps, geological maps, which tell you where, what bedrock your area is on. You know, just do, do a study and try and gain that confidence of where your building foundation lies.